Hi guys. All right, so this week we are working on 4.3a and 4.4a, which means the first part of chapter four and chap chapter four, section three, and the first part of chapter four, section four. We're gonna combine those two pieces. And then tomorrow you can work on 4.3b and 4.4b, which means the second half of each of those chapters. So this one is um, proving triangles congruent. And you've probably heard of these little methods that we have, these postulates. The first one is called side, side, side. Or a lot of times we just do SSS. That's like our short, shorthand way to write that. And what that means is that when you compare the triangles, you're comparing and all sides, all three sides are congruent to each other. So if I have one triangle, two triangles, then this side is congruent to this side, this side congruent, and the third sides are also congruent. So we're positive that they are congruent triangles, that they are the same because all three of their sides are exactly the same. They match. So that's one way we can be sure two triangles are congruent. Uh, the next one is side angle side. Side angle side. And we will do SAS. -S. You'll see that for short. And what that means is two two pairs of corresponding sides are congruent and it's the angle in between. See how it says side angle side? So it can't be a side, a side, and then an angle. It's gotta be the angle right between those two sides and they call that the included angle. Okay, and it would look like this. Let's draw our triangles. And if we knew these sides were congruent and these sides, then as long as the angle in between them, so that would be this little guy, this little guy, as long as those angles are also congruent, then that's enough to prove that these two triangles have to be the same. All right, let's do another one. This one is angle side angle. Angle side angle, which means if you've got two angles and see how the side is written right in between, it's got to be the side in between them, then that's good enough. We call that ASA for short. So two pairs of corresponding angles and their included side. So it's got to be, it's got to be in between those two angles to count. The last one is angle angle side so the names actually kind of tell us what order they need to be in and that one a a s two pairs of corresponding angles so they're right next to each other and then the side is after that so it's not between it's not written in between them angle and then an angle and then the side right next to that so the word that we would put here Two pairs of corresponding angles and the non-included, non-included side, which means it's not in between them, it's uh, next to. Oh, and I forgot to draw a picture. Oh, let's go back and draw a picture. Okay, this one is angle, side, angle. So let's do this angle congruent to this angle and then a side this side to this side, and then another angle right next to that. See how they're all in a row? They're all touching each other. Yeah, it's gotta be like that. So angle, side between them, angle. And then this one was angle, angle, side. So we'll do, how about those two guys are the same. And then the next angle this way, and then a side. So this is the next, as we kind of, kind of like as you're going around. Now you could go around the other direction too, 
I could have drawn that. Let's put another example here just so we know. If we had said these angles and then worked our way around the other way, so these two angles are congruent, and then a side. Actually, it ends up being the same side, doesn't it? Okay, so you could go around clockwise, you could go around counterclockwise, but you've got to make sure they're following this pattern. So two angles next to each other and a side next to that. An angle next to a side next to an angle. Okay, let's try it. This says determine which postulates, and these are our little shortcut statements, can be used to prove that the triangles are congruent. And if it's not possible, because they're going to throw those at us where it doesn't even match, like we don't have enough information and we have to be able to recognize and say, wait, I can't even prove that doesn't fit any of those four reasons. We'll write not possible. So we'll do these two together first. This guy, we've got one side, one side, and one side. Which one was that? Yeah, side, side, side. And it might be helpful to pick one to start. So I could have written S and then go around in a circle. The next one would be a side and go around the next one is a side. So you can get those letters in a row just to make it easier to pick to identify which one is working. All right, let's see this one. This guy, well, if he's perpendicular, this has to be perpendicular also. So they both have a 90 degree angle. And then next to that, so I'm going to start with that angle. They've got some matching angles here, congruent. Then if I work my way over this, this side, that's a side that matches that side. And if I keep going around, there's another side. Uh-oh, that is not one of the ones that we have written down. I'm not even going to write that on there. <laughs> that's not good. Okay. Or if we looked at, if we had started here, we would have gotten side and then worked our way around side. And then the next would be the angle. That's not one. So if it doesn't work, it's not going, it's not going to work either way. So that's not, not possible to prove that these two triangles are congruent. But you know what else I'm thinking as I'm looking at it? This side right here is congruent because he is on that triangle and he is also on that triangle. So I'm going to erase what I put here based on those pieces that they had marked. That's not possible, but we know that when this line is the side for each triangle, it's got to be congruent to itself. It can't be uncongruent to itself. And when we have that much information, then this side is congruent. These sides are congruent. And the third side is congruent also. So really, even though they didn't tell us that middle one, that is congruent. Those two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay. That one was tricky. I don't really like that. All right, I've got three here, and I'm going to say, go ahead and see, pause your video. If you're watching this on video, pause this and see which of those four reasons work for these triangles. Okay, take a minute and then come back. Okay, all right, let's check. So if we're looking at this one, we've got a side and then an angle and then a side, side, and then an angle in between, and then a side, and they're all right next to each other. That is one of our, I'm gonna slide that paper up. That's this guy, side, angle, side. That's one of the reasons we can use that. So those two triangles we can prove are congruent. They're the same by side, angle, side. Let's look at D. So here they told us this side is congruent, to that one, this side is congruent, and they didn't give us any more. So I can see why we might say side, side, that's not enough. But I also think these guys, third side is congruent because they share it. It's exactly the same for each of them. So 
they do have three sides that we are, are sure are congruent. That one would be a side, side, side. All right, down here. So this one, we've got a side and then a side and then an angle. That is not one of our, um, uh -uh. that's not one of them, side, side, angle. And if we rearranged it, if we started on this side, so angle and then side and then side, that doesn't work either. So this one, we're going to say not possible. Not enough information there to prove that those two are congruent. Let's look at this one. So here, they gave us the outside side. Those are congruent and there's nothing else written on there. We do know that vertical angles are congruent and there are vertical angles on here. So these guys are congruent angles. That gives us a little bit more information, but we still don't have anything else. We can't tell anything about these outside angles and we can't tell anything about these other sides. There's not enough information there to come up with three, three letters for our, our little three letter reasons, our postulates. So we'll say not possible. Okay, let's turn the page. This one, determine whether you have enough information to prove the two triangles are congruent. If so, write a congruent statement and name the postulate you would use. And then if not, write not possible. Okay, so first let's look and see if they're congruent, if we have enough information. This one, they told us that these, these two sides are congruent. We do know by looking at it that these would both have to be 90 degree angles, right? If you have a line and a perpendicular line, it would have to be 90 on both sides to make 180. So there are congruent angles and then they share a side that has to be congruent because they both have the same side. It, it can't be different for one than it is for the other. So let's look and see side, angle, side. If we used that one, that would prove that's a real one. That one works that would mean that they are congruent and it works. So side angle side. Now a congruent statement, once we know that we have to write a congruent statement. That's where you put the little congru congruent sign. And then on one side, you would list the vertices of one triangle. And on the other, you'd list the vertices of the other triangle. You've got to put them in the same order though. So they have to be uh, their congruent or partner um, vertex has to be listed in the same spot. So I'm going to, let's do A, B, D for our first triangle. And then the second triangle, since we listed A first, we need to find on the other triangle the one that's matching with A, which one is um, corresponding and it's way out here. C, see how A is way up at the tippy top? And C is way, it's like the furthest one out from it. So C has to come first, or it's not a congruent statement. We have to show what pieces are congruent exactly to the other triangle, that same spot. Then we went from A, we moved to B. So on the triangle that's here, C, we would also move to B, back to the middle. And then we move up here to D, so that would be the same. We would move up to D. Okay, that's our congruent statement. And that was our reason um, that would prove that those two triangles are congruent. Let's do one more together and we'll let you have a turn. This one, so I think we're just looking at these outside triangles here. And they told us that this angle is congruent to this angle. So we have an angle and, and let's see, I started right in the middle, didn't I? Because this, these two angles are congruent and then we have two sides. So I'm gonna erase that, even though I'm probably just rewriting the same letter, but 
since he is in between the side and the other angle, I want to start in a different spot. Let's start with this angle. And then we'll rotate around. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise, you know, pick, pick your direction. I'm going to go around to the next. The next thing that's closest to that is another angle. And then the thing is I keep going around that's closest to that is a side. So angle, angle, side. That is one of our postulates. That's one of our reasons. So that actually works. These two triangles are congruent. And then we have to write our congruent statement. Congruent to, okay. And we've got to put them in the same order. So let's do A, B, E on the first triangle. And then when we flip over here to the second triangle, we've got to get the ones in the same position. So we pick A first. He's the one with one arc mark. And on this triangle, it's D. D has one arc mark. D. On the first triangle, we went from A and slid in towards B. So from D, we would slide into C. And then we went up to E. So actually E will be the last piece of both of those. That is our congruent statement. We lined everything up exactly in the same order. Okay, got two for you to try. So you wanna first decide, are they congruent? Do you have enough information there? And then if so, write a congruent statement. Pause this and work on that for a minute. All right, let's check it. We have no sides are marked as congruent. There's not much information here. We do know vertical angles are congruent. So this angle would have to be congruent to that angle. That's really, we don't know anything about the other angles though. So we can say one angle is congruent. That's not enough to determine if these two triangles are are the same or congruent. So we'll have to put not possible on that one. Yeah, there's very little information on that one. All right, the next one. We have an angle congruent and then a side is congruent. Is there anything else we know about this one? Ah, yeah, vertical. Vertical angles are also congruent. So we know angle, side, angle, they're all right next to each other. So this, we can write that down, an angle with a side in between and then another angle. And that is one of the four rules. So that's, that's valid. Those are congruent triangles. Let's make our congruent statement. And we can call this triangle, how about RST? RST, you might have picked a different order. That's fine, just make sure that your letters are lining up in the same position. So since I put R first, I need to find the one on the triangle, the other triangle that just has that one arc mark on it, that's U. So wherever you put R in your triangle, make sure U is in the same spot. Then I went to S, which is this outside angle with no arc mark. So he's the same as V. And then from there I went into T and that would happen with the other one too. Okay. So you don't have to have yours necessarily in the exact same order, but make sure that they're in the same order as the other one in comparison. So your R is in the U spot, your S is in the V spot, and your T is in the T spot. Okay. All right, let's look down here. This says, state what additional information is needed in order to prove the triangles are congruent. So they're telling us a reason, and then we need to look and say, yeah, but we don't have whatever's missing. And we'll write that part down. Okay, so if they want us to do angle, angle, side, we need two angles next to each other and a side right next to that. And we know K and D are congruent, so we've got one angle. Now we need a second angle. They didn't give us a second angle. So we either need to know for sure that M and F are congruent, or we could have gone the other way, and we would need to know that L and E are congruent. So let's say need 
another angle. And we'll put, well, let's, let's write down both options. If they told us angle M was congruent to angle F, um, I'm going to make a capital M so it matches. Angle M is congruent to angle F. That would have worked. Or they could have told us angle L is congruent to angle E. And then we would have angle, angle, and that last side they told us. They did give us the side. They just didn't give us the, the other angle. Okay. So that's, that's what we would need to be able to finish that one. Let's check this one. This one says side, angle, side. So we need a side, an angle in between, and another side. And they told us that these sides are congruent. Probably we're using that vertical angle in the middle. So side, angle, and then we need another side to finish this out. And they didn't tell us about that. They, this is the piece that we are missing. For this to work, we need to know that side EF is actually congruent to EK. So we're missing, we need to know another side. So we'll have all, all three of those pieces. And this time it's specific. We couldn't pick out here if these two sides were congruent, we wouldn't have an angle in between them and the side that they gave us. So that side wouldn't work for this. We need to be able to go side, angle, side right next to each other. So we need angle or side FE to be congruent to side KE. Or I could have written EF and EK as long as I've got those things in the same position. All right, I've got two here for you to try. Take a second and try those and then come back. All right, side, side, side. Well, we know these sides are congruent. They marked them. We also know this middle piece is congruent to itself. It has to be. So we're missing that third side. We need to know that this one is congruent to this one needs a side and it is specifically, I'm going to say WC to DC. You might have said CW to CD. That's fine. Same thing. Last one, angle side angle. They gave us a side. We know vertical angles are congruent. So we'll use that. And We'll put, we need angle to be first, and then a side, and then we need the angle right next to that. So it would have to be all in a row. That means this angle needs to be congruent to this one if we want these two triangles to be the same, to be congruent. So we need angle N, oh, I keep doing lowercase, N to be congruent to angle G for that to work. Does that look like an N? It kind of looks like a, okay, we'll do that just so it's real clear. Angle N and angle G need to be congruent. Okay, you guys, you have assignment 43A and 44A that goes with this you can work on. And in the next video, we will look at 44B, 43B and 44B. So we'll do the second half of this chapter. All right, good luck.